Hello everyone and welcome to Monkey Monkey Literature Club. And today's book is The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI on the Pursuit of Women by Aaron Clary. Now this reminded me of a video I did all the way back in 2016. It basically, I was looking at how much it costs to replace the services of a wife. So women, you know, they bear your children, they keep your dick moisturized, they may do some light domestic work. You could take the services that a wife provides, get them professionally done, and then compare how much it costs to get all the services that a wife provides done by a professional versus what a divorce will cost you. And that gives you like a good indication of what you're getting in exchange for getting married. So anyway, that's what this book reminded me of. Um, so Aaron Clary, he doesn't just break out the cost of chasing women. He also goes into the likelihood of finding a marriageable woman, which I didn't go into. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Um, there's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of statistics and a kind of economic analyses going on. I don't want to spoil the ending and tell you what the answer is. But uh, Aaron Clary goes into... You know, just how difficult it is to find a marriageable woman as the feminism and the sordid Marxist bullshit has basically infected women throughout the Western world. So what's the likelihood of you finding a marriageable woman? And then what's the likelihood of her being attracted to you? You know, because unless you're Christian Grey, unless you're an independently wealthy, you know, six foot five billionaire with a, you know, two foot cock, you know, what, what's your chances of even finding one of these marriageable women that actually is willing to settle down with you. And so he goes into that. That's one section of the book where he goes into the likelihood of even finding someone worth marrying who actually wants to marry you in return. Then goes into the cost of, you know, settling down and marrying them and pursuing them and dating them and courting them and the, the, the wedding and all that stuff. Again, I don't want to spoil the ending. Check out the book for yourself. But it's a pretty damning conclusion. So I do want to give a little bit of constructive criticism. There is a section where he talks about how um, you can increase the likelihood of you, you finding a good woman by asking 100 women out a year. You know, don't just wait for women to come to you. You know, make a, a commitment to ask out, you know, a woman every day or a couple women a week or, or whatever. Um, that would be good advice if this wasn't like the era of Me Too. And he didn't really go into that. So asking women out, you know, a couple, even just a couple years ago, I'm not even talking like generations ago, like some bygone age, just a couple years ago, that was considered kind of normal. If you saw a cute girl, you'd be like, oh, hey, you know, I think you're pretty cute. Um, would you like to get some coffee sometime? That was perfectly acceptable. Now, uh, you might get slapped with some type of sexual harassment. If it's, you know, just, you don't even know, like stranger things have happened. So it's, it's getting even worse out there. Like your, in your commitment to, to wanting to date multiple women and wanting to get out there and whatever. Now, obviously not all women are like that. Not all women are going to file uh, sexual harassment charges against you for you asking them out out of the blue, but it just takes one. It takes one woman to ruin your life. And so you commit to ask out, you know, every woman that catches your fancy, the likelihood of you asking out that one crazy woman eventually reaches, you know, 100%. And there was, I remember, uh, there's a story of some celebrity who was taking an Uber and the Uber driver thought she was cute. And, you know, because part of the whole Uber thing is he could text her. He just texted her and said, hey, I think you're pretty cute. Would you like to get some coffee sometime? That was it. That was it basically, oh, hey, I was your Uber driver. I think you're attractive. Would you like to go out sometime? Not, I'm going to stalk you and you better not say no. I'm going to kill your family. Just, I think you're attractive and would you like to go out sometime? And she shamed him on social media and said how she felt threatened and how she didn't feel safe in her home because this Uber driver thought she was attractive. That's the kind of crazy shit we're dealing with now. So, you know, again, just a couple years ago, uh, you know, if you want to just ask out every girl that catches your eye, just, you know, flash a smile, introduce yourself, say, oh, hey, you know, you look, I think you're pretty attractive. Would you like to get a coffee or something? That would have been perfectly acceptable just a couple years ago. Where, like, I mean, back in the day, what you do would you you'd make eye contact and you'd smile 
and maybe she'd smile back or maybe she'd wave or maybe she'd motion you over and that was your end to go talk to her. Uh, you didn't just go over and just talk to a girl because you thought she was cute because that, that could offend her. Now, just looking at a girl, like you'd be looking at a girl just trying to make that eye contact in order to flash her a smile and she might turn to someone and say, I feel threatened. There's an, there's an unattractive man looking at me. I don't feel safe. And then they'll throw you out or, you know, she'll just make some shit up just to get you to leave because you found her attractive and you're beneath her standards. It's like you need to you need to read women's minds and know, like, if you meet their standards before you even not even engage with them, look at them because looking at the wrong woman can get you in trouble. I get the advice Aaron Clary is trying to give, and it's like solid advice from a... Uh, an economic standpoint, like you're trying to meet the one, you do have to meet girls. Here is my alternative advice. So when you get to that section in Aaron Clary's book where he talks about uh, talking to as many women as possible and going on as many dates as possible to try to find the right one, let me give you some alternative advice. Good women are not an accident. Good women exist in patriarchal cultures. So if you want to know where the good women are, go where women don't have the kind of empowerment that they have in most, you know, Western places. So if you're in the middle of a city, you're kind of SOL because the cities are just hotbeds of feminism and leftism. If you go to more of a conservative religious community or even better yet, a very orthodox or a fundamentalist Christian or religious community where there's patriarchy, even better. That's where you're going to find your good women. Because women aren't born, they're made. And they're made by patriarchy. So you don't need to just date a hundred Karens a year. Uh, maybe they'll fuck you, but then if you don't put a ring on it, they could falsely accuse you of rape, or they can accuse you of any number of things, and it's just not worth it. If you really want to find a good woman, you got to go where there's patriarchy, because that's where the good women are. Patriarchy equals good women. So just go where the patriarchy is, if it means that much to you. If it means leaving the country, then leave the country. The only other criticism I can levy against the book is he didn't mention sex dolls. I think that was a, a pretty big oversight. When you talk about the ROI, you know, you, when you're doing an economic analysis of, of any kind of product or service, you need to look at their competing products and services, replacement products and services. So if you want to know what the price of apples are going to be relative to if the price goes up or down, you need to look at what the price of pears are. Because if the price of apples goes up, people may buy fewer apples, but people also may buy more pears. There are options in 2020 that you have as a man to satisfy your need for love and sex, um, since women are so terrible. And I know I'm not talking about traps, although if you're gay, more power to you. Um, I'm talking about you know sex dolls and, and waifus and stuff like that. But that's not for everyone, and I can appreciate that. Um, anyway, but as far as the analysis goes, like, again, it's not a complete breakdown of all your options and the entire landscape available to you, but it's a really good thorough analysis of, of a couple of the elements, the major elements in this equation. So I would check out Aaron Clary's The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI on the Pursuit of Women, just to see the numbers he's come up with and how he came to those conclusions. He has a lot of sources listed. Um, so he did a lot of work compiling these numbers. So I think it's worth it, worth your time to check out. And it's very fairly priced. It's like less than $10 on Kindle. So if that interests you, check out um, Aaron Clary's The Book of Numbers. I'll provide a link in the description. And that is the end of uh, my review. So thank you for joining us on Monkey Monkey Literature Club. And we'll see you next time.